How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. What's going on guys, Hypocrite Hunter 666 here, coming back at you with another video. And today, we'll be taking a look at a live stream clip from my favorite locale of the internet, Grifter Gaming. This guy, as time goes on, says more and more stupid shit. His ego is just so big that he can't even fit his fucking head at this point. Especially when it comes to modern COD where he has to double, triple, and quadruple down on it as if his life depended on it. But then again, I don't expect anything less from an internet fanboy. Especially from a fanboy who has the balls to call out everyone except himself. That alone should show you how much of a loser this guy is. But hey, gotta give him props for being in another locale just like Wings of Redemption and DSP. Cause he needs that money for this bill's electric bill, the internet bill. And I want to take this time to welcome the grifter into low-cow status. Welcome griffin, welcome to low-cow status, motherfucker. You earned it. And with all that out of the way, let's go laugh at some low-cow content. Tomorrow. So let's see. The Butch is toxic with the two. I want a Better Call Saul episode on Shark Week. What the fuck? Fair enough, man. Oh hey, it's one of the pay picks. Sup loser, has the Grifter noticed your pathetic existence yet? There will be no shortage of volunteers. No shortage of patriots. Call of Duty, a beloved franchise that edges closer to becoming a memory, is proving to no longer be the powerhouse and staple in gaming. For years, Call of Duty has been a consistent machine releasing a title basically every year, and despite some titles receiving backlash, have been played by millions and cemented a place in hearts of many. Real quick before I go on, there will be credit given down in the descriptions and throughout the video there are different labeled sections if you want to skip ahead or need to go back. Back to it. As we look onto the nature of the game today, many would agree that Call of Duty is not in the same place it has been for the many years that it was. We must ask, where did Call of Duty go wrong? I don't really think it went wrong. Well, I'd say advanced movement, with the exception of advanced warfare, but I would say that's probably it. Oh my fucking god. We were just about a minute into this fucking video and he's already gonna play the selective outrage card like really? If you want to criticize something, go full fucking force. Don't let your fucking biases get in the way. I mean, honestly, the current state's not bad. Like, Modern Warfare 2019 was a big improvement for a lot of shit, I feel like. Like, it updated the boots-on-the-ground gameplay, but it kind of went back to, like, the classic style. I don't know. Imagine defending a game that encourages you to camp like a little bitch. And not to mention, this is the first game that ever introduced strong SBMM, which is so broken that it will send you to those sweaty-ass tryhard servers, just for getting a simple 1 to 0 KD ratio. Before anything, we must look at the state Call of Duty is in now and what's making it different than ever before. Since 2019, we've seen the release of a new generation of Call of Duty with Modern Warfare, Black Ops, and Vanguard. Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War fucking sucks. Black Ops both being rebooted versions of our fan favorite games in the series. We get dirty and the world stays clean. That's the mission. We've seen quality in these campaigns such as Modern Warfare and Black Ops despite a few hiccups. I'm a goddamn onion, Mason. You should know that. You can't heal me! Vanguard, while providing a different cast of characters, has disappointed many and has disappointed me. It slaps history in the face and makes for a cheesy story. And although disappointing, it shouldn't be a deal breaker for a Call of Duty game. But what is the biggest deal breaker is the online experience within multiplayer and the right hand man being at side mode. Looking at our. Bruh. <laughs> Another dodge from Mr. Griffin Gaming. Yeah, guys, let's just move on to the next topic because the next thing he says makes a little too much sense and I don't know if I can counter it. Like, how pathetic, man. If you're going to respond to the video, respond to the video. A recent game in Vanguard, many have abandoned it and either moved on to other games or gone back to older titles such as 2019's Modern Warfare. It's a game that is littered with bugs, broken mechanics, broken weapon balancing, and a lack of care. All right, this is what I can't fucking stand, bro. If this dude praises Modern Warfare 2, or basically any Call of Duty from that era, after saying that this game has broken weapon balancing as being some sort of negative, then he's a fake COD fan. Because that's what made old COD fun was weapon imbalancing. When Call of Duty started, like, balancing everything, like they were trying to create the fucking perfect MLG tryhard sweat fest. That's when shit started going downhill.
And this is literally what I can't stand about you COD fanboys. Cause you motherfuckers are in horrible denial over the franchise you're defending at this point. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start off with the quote unquote unbalanced shit in old card. Old card allows you two attachments per primary weapon and one attachment per secondary weapon except for the launchers and melee weapons. But with Vanguard, you are allowed up to 10 attachments per weapon. So not sure if I'm tripping here but Vanguard's weapons appear a lot more unbalanced than old card's weapons. Just some food for thought. As for the MLG Tryhard Sweatfest, you do realize this is what's happening in modern COD, right? Where the matchmaking would literally pair you up with those sweaty drop shotting nerds for daring to even have a simple 1 to 0 KD ratio. Care for the community. Even with the lack of care for the community in other games, we've at least seen consistent updates pushed out, but rather this time, it seems the developers have abandoned ship on Vanguard. We've Vanguard said a ton of content updates, the fuck are you talking about? Objection hearsay. I've seen bugs since the beginning remain in the game, guns that need balancing remain broken for an eternity, and barely- Yeah, you know that's basically every COD game. Except the fucking sweaty fucking tryhard bullshit like Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4. Eh, to an extent in Modern Warfare 2019 they did a lot of weapon balancing. But yeah, weapon balancing in the older Call of Duties was not a fucking thing, bro. Like, look at fucking quickscoping. And you can literally quickscope even in the newer COD games, so what the fuck is your point? Or the UMP-45 in Modern Warfare 2. Like, I don't know. Weapon balancing has, or imbalance, I should say, has always been what made COD fun. Like, having just really fucking OP weapons made the game enjoyable. People ask me why I spam an overused meme sometimes in my videos, and this is exactly why. These retards that I respond to will literally just repeat themselves over and over and fucking over, although they've already been proven wrong. I literally just answered this fucking question regarding Olcott's weapons being too overpowered slash unbalanced. So I'm not gonna respond to a troll who's deliberately fishing for hate bait. Anything ever new. They're pushing out the bare minimum that they are required to create for new seasons. The game has potential and was released with a good chunk of content for multiplayer with loads of guns, maps, and modes to satisfy an average Call of Duty player. A lot of it didn't matter and left Vanguard in a barren wasteland waiting to completely die. Usually with a dissatisfied multiplayer, we have hopes in a mode like Zombies where it can take the mantle of carrying the game, but this year, it has fallen harder than any other mode has ever fallen in Call of Duty. With uh, I think Extinction and Ghost is probably what you're looking for in that case. Imagine being this pathetic to deflect criticism without even listening to it. But it's okay man, we all know why you did it. Yeah, I don't know about zombies, I don't touch zombies. Such high hopes, we've seen zombies completely transform bearing its popular identity into the ground. Luckily for Call of Duty, it has another shot at proving itself with its most recent stake in the battle royale genre with Warzone. Warzone being released in 2020 has proven to suffice as an addition to the popular list of battle royale games. As time moved on, it has reached a state of exhaustion where people are disappointed and remembering the old days of Warzone. The mode itself has carried attention away from what made Call of Duty a popular series in the first place. It Black Ops 3 is not what made Call of Duty a popular thing in the first place. Look here! Look here! Look! Listen! Are you fucking high? The dude was talking about fucking Warzone and not fucking Black Ops 3, you dumb fuck. Him showing Black Ops 3 in the background is just simply fucking gameplay footage. So stop giving fucking advice you know nothing about. It leaves us to question the heart of the series, which lies directly within us. Bro, he's really using Black Ops 3 footage? <laughs> it's like what made Call of Duty great? Hell nah. Bruh. That's an L. Yo, is this person fucking retarded? The community. Black Ops 3 was literal pay to win garbage, bro. And I really hope you weren't a Star Wars fan because Battlefront 2, it gave you an Ewok and then told you to hit the fucking bricks, so... Bro, Battlefront 2 is like one of the best games EA has ever put out. Like, bro, if you play Battlefront 2 right now, this is high key, like one of the best Star Wars games ever made. They made this game fucking amazing. Like, Battlefront 2 is high key a phenomenal game at this point. It's really good. I'm gonna be honest, man. 
I was not one of those people that was like, oh my God, the microtransactions ruined. Like, bro, I'm not going to lie. I love Battlefront 2 from the very first day. I was playing this shit nonstop, bro. I loved it from the beginning. Even though it was quote unquote paid to win, I still fucking loved it. I don't care. Battlefront 2 was always good to me. The mic. Transactions. Yeah, I think nobody has any problem seeing what you really like about that game. And to top it all off, Battlefront 2 was missing tons of content at launch, so how is it one of EA's best games? But I think you bitching about the microtransactions and pay to win haters says a lot about why you really like that game. I always liked it. That's what you call ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Abandoned. Tainted forgotten. I believe that's how the community feels majority of the time. Disappointment is almost expected with COD that the bar for expectations have been set embarrassingly low. You will often run into the same players from previous days because the player count has gotten incredibly low compared to previous years and a lot of people play to just play. Whether that is nostalgia, they're new to the series, or whatever but not a lot have gotten stuck in that limbo. There's almost nothing for people to come together for, and the community has started to get numb to how things are. If we take a look at the zombies community, Vanguard completely shifted how zombies works and should have never even given us a zombies mode in the first place. I mean, no wonder weapons until months into launch, no round based zombies map, boring story and characters, but I mean, at least we got this gem from Mr. Waffle Waffles. Memes aside, the zombies community usually has to wait years in between games before they actually get new zombies content. This year it has been completely ruined and left to stain in one of the best gaming communities out there. It's something that can permanently affect a smaller community that relies on this content. And it hasn't always been like this. And a lot would imply that the reason it has changed is because we have grown up. But I would have to strongly disagree with that. Passion? A passion for cash, maybe. Oh my god, are we really going down this route? Gotta love that selective outrage, though. What's the matter, loser? Need your attention from Daddy, Bobby, the Gnome Codic? And your monthly kickbacks on your favorite corporate masters? I do make money from sales, bro. I have stocks in Microsoft and Activision at the time, since we're talking about Bungie or Destiny 1. And not anymore. I don't think you can invest in Dest or Bungie right now. I mean, I have stocks in a bunch of video game companies. So I actually do make money from it. That's the thing, man. 300 IQ plays. Buy the companies that you like, so that way when you buy their products, you're basically paying yourself in a sense. I love gaming with the two. Black Ops 4 was nothing but a sweat fest. Clusterfuck? Yeah, it sucked, bro. Black Ops 3 and 4 were trash. I don't care. Like, people love Black Ops 3 or whatever. I did not. I fucking hated that game. Developing a game is a work of art. They require passion and people. <laughs> yeah. A work of art, bro. It's like um, Dreamcast guy when he calls it. I just appreciate art. Hear ye, hear ye. Our Lord and Savior Griff the Christ has spoken. From now on, none of you are allowed to show even the slightest bit of appreciation for any sort of game graphics. Like, shut the fuck up and go back to r slash gatekeeping, motherfucker. People with creative ideas. A big reason why Call of Duty used to be so special. All Sledgehammer's games suck ass. I'm not really mad, bro. I agree on World War II. That game fucking sucked cock. It's the only COD game I've never bought. It's because every year the developers were given the keys to make a stellar game for the community and something they could be proud of themselves. Everyone was winning. The developers were less restricted and happier. The publishers got loads of money, and we got a place full of memories and jitters every time we booted up that game. Without passion, no one cares enough, and we're just building the basics for a COD game. The How do you know, like, the... Alright, that's a complete lie. The fuck are you talk? Alright, hold on, let's back this up. Winning. The developers were less restricted and... That is a fucking lie, and you're using Modern Warfare 2 footage. Modern Warfare 2 footage. Oh, but it's okay for you to lie, saying that this is Modern Warfare 2 when it's actually Modern Warfare 3, judging by the Killstreaks icon. Publishers got loads of money, and we got a place full of memories and jitters every time we booted up that game. Without passion, no one cares enough, and we're just building the basics for a COD game. Like, he's flashing the Infinity Ward logo, which is actually fucking funny, because they're the ones who left the company because they were too restricted. 
the bare minimum. I think if we look at the older Modern Warfare and Black Ops games, the first one in their own series were top of the line and at the time, hard to beat. I mean, if you were tasked with building a better game than Black Ops 1 or Modern Warfare, how would you do that? Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 3 Warfare was only like the biggest breakout game that defined the COD formula for the whole series. Shouldn't be too hard to top. Black Ops 1 was only a game that had it all within a fan favorite story, best side mode in zombies, and a multiplayer that innovated off of Modern Warfare. I think if we look into the perspective of the developers, I will have to bet a lot of them were happy seeing the feedback their creations were getting. It could only fuel them to go above and beyond that because they know they can, or at least they were going to try despite the added pressure. And passion will do that. It will motivate the best of us to go out there and dump our creativity all over something. Even the games that received negative attention like Ghosts and Advanced Warfare, you can see the passion behind the work of these games. Pa Alright, you know, he's putting some respect on Advanced Warfare, which I appreciate because Advanced Warfare is pretty fucking fire. If the shoe fits, am I right? Um, Infernus of the Two, Black Ops 2 was better than any modern COD. Mm, I could understand why you'd say that. I do not agree. I like Modern Warfare 2019 better than Black Ops 2. See what I mean? Passion was dumped into it whether we liked the finished product or not. And that was okay. It was okay to fail. It tells creators what roads to not go down again. The important bit is that they were trying, innovating, and trying to top their previous games to keep things fresh for us. And we must appreciate that. Because of that passion, we were able to get the next piece to our puzzle. When dipping our toes in history, we must make sure not to be blinded by nostalgia, but we must look at what made us feel good when playing these games. Community is the heart of any game, and with a good game comes a community of gamers who share interests. It creates many opportunities for bonding and creating friendships almost any match you play. Lobbies full of mics, people trash talking, firing up the competition, and sessions to grind for hours with friends. The atmosphere was there. And I doubt there was a day where players weren't excited to hop on the game. You had a bad day? Hop on COD. Game with the buddies. Get on YouTube and watch creators doing wacky and cool stuff. The possibilities were there. And the community was thriving. It created a safe space. Regardless of the toxic lobbies, it was comforting. In a sense. And I guess that's hard to explain how a game full of toxic lobbies feels comforting. But I know there are a few who could explain that better for me. And there were options. You had the esports world. Custom games public matches, zombies with a story and endless fight for survival, and a memorable campaign. And they were all populated for a reason. Take a look at today. What is still there and cared for? Esports and campaign is the closest thing I can think of that remains somewhat consistent. For those who have never experienced old Call of Duty, let me tell you what went through our heads almost every day on the game. You'd wake up randomly, Rather than going back to bed, your brain convinces you to hop on and grind out the game. You're thinking of getting those extra levels to prestige and unlocking those gold camos just to show them off. I mean, what it sounds like is basically that he grew up. Because you're what you're describing right now is like the mind of like a teenager or maybe like an early 20s person. And now, 10 years later, you don't have the same priorities in life. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, maybe this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. Maybe COD didn't change that much. Maybe it's just all of us that fucking changed. We really don't have to take advice from somebody who had a life meltdown over a fucking COD game. Like, are you really any more mature than us to be preaching this fucking shit? Off later with your friends. You party up and run into some interesting people. It may be a roasting session, someone to talk to, or someone to mess around with. Like right here, he was bitching about imbalanced weapons and Vanguard, but yet he's using the fucking sniper rifle shotgun known as the Spas 12. Like, dude, this was what made COD fun was imbalanced weapons. Like, MW2 was fun because it wasn't fucking balanced. You could use all these crazy fucking guns that were just fun. Objection! And loading 10 attachments onto each weapon in Vanguard isn't quote-unquote overpowered or imbalanced. Also, what do you mean sniper rifle shotgun? I don't recall the Spaz 12 ever being that good. But you know what, let's call a real Call of Duty expert to the stand to testify this. Since I'm just a casual COD player and I don't go in-depth into the weapons of every single COD game. And to also back up my credibility. Your Honor, I'd like to call Xbox Ahoy to the stand to testify the functions of the Spaz 12 in Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> 
the eye in sight saw a rear aperture front post type. But they really don't matter, as the limited range and shot dispersion of the shotguns means aiming is among the least of your concerns. The Spaz-12, then, is a devastating weapon up close, as with most of the shotguns, usually resulting in a one-shot kill if even only a few of the pellets make contact. The Spaz-12's range is very good when compared to the rest of the shotguns. It can kill in ranges greater than that of the post-patch 1887s. However, at longer ranges, a one-hit kill certainly is not guaranteed, and at middle distances your shots will not connect at all. It's imperative that you use the shotgun for only close-range encounters. Trying to run around in the open will mean that pretty much anyone will be able to outclass your weapon's range. Stick to the inside of buildings, twisty corridors, and tight spaces, and you'll be able to settle arguments very quickly with the Spaz-12. And because of this, I'll be able to use your own words at 3.39 of this video back at you. Take that! Interesting people. It may be a roasting session, someone to talk to, or someone to mess around with in matches. Don't forget that most of us love loading up on food and drinks to make for a hell of a night. And you could have a plate of life responsibilities, but you didn't care. You had the night for yourself, and it for sure wasn't going to be a boring one. Your mind was eased, free of worry. And during all this, your mind is waiting for that next Call of Duty game. And you're thinking how much you want to play it and purchase it at midnight. And the best part about MW3 go to don't at me. All that is that you weren't alone. There was millions of people right there with you bathing in that same experience. It seems like nostalgia, right? Well, it is. But I don't believe that because we experience nostalgia that we are getting lost in the memories. We're experiencing nostalgia here because we lost something that we thought would never end or at least know when it was going to slip away. When playing through the peak of COD, we never were talking about the good old days of all the other old COD games at the time because we still had new days that were full of the same experiences we cherished. It was easy to live in the moment and it was a loop. And I don't blame anyone for wanting to be back in that. But unfortunately, it faded away and morphed into something else. Something that is becoming nothing but a letdown. A lot of us can have several different points where we claim Call of Duty took a turn for worse. A good portion may agree it was when we were introduced into the advanced movement era where we had jetpacks and- God, I fucking love this game, dude. This is nostalgic right here. I fucking love Advanced Warfare. Dude, I love- Like, honestly, why the fuck Sledgehammer did not make Advanced Warfare 2? Just still pisses me off to this day. We got shitty World War 2 instead. Bro, I'm like, I don't know. Advanced Warfare was my fucking shit, bro. I went like semi-pro in that game. Not to flex or anything, but yeah. Basically had a fucking massive 25 inch penis in COD. Jumped into the future. And although I agree that I never cared much for this era, it wasn't the decline for the series. The reason why I say that is because this was an experimental phase for the developers trying to innovate for the benefit of us. And a lot of people actually did enjoy it. And personally, there was everything I wanted in Black Ops 3 except for the campaign. And I don't regret a second I spent on that game, but there was a disconnect and the community was heard. We moved on from that. Although a lot of us didn't like the futuristic feel, the games had the care and nurturing the games needed. Where I think that really changed was in 2018 with Black Ops 4. If you remember anything about it, the gunplay felt smooth, considerably some of the best satisfying gunplay in the series, and that's about the best it had. Priorities were shifted, and developers had their hand forced as they were pushed to cancel the campaign and move assets into an experimental battle royale mode. That is a lie. No, 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 no. What happened is, is David Vondahar wanted to make an Overwatch clone, and in the last nine months, before Black Ops 4 was supposed to come out, Activision basically went in there and said, what in the fuck did you all make? And made them scrap the entire game. They made a hero shooter like Overwatch with like fucking escort missions and shit like that. So Activision came in and said, this is not Call of Duty. Get fucking rid of this. So they basically had to make an asset flip of Black Ops 3 and they called it Black Ops 4. Long story short, Black Ops 4 is a carbon copy of Black Ops 3 because they were only given a couple months to correct their big fuck up in making an Overwatch clone. It had nothing to do with anything. There was never going to be a campaign. Um, I don't even think Treyarch made Blackout. I'm pretty sure Ravensoft made that shit. So that's what I mean. That That's not a factual statement at all.
Black Ops 4 was originally going to be a fucking Overwatch clone. Activision said, fuck no, fix this shit. So they made a Black Ops 3 asset flip at the last minute. That's the reason why it is what it is. Literal safe area where zombies don't attack you unless you shoot them. What? It removes all intensity and drama. It's like, dude, you could be standing five feet away from them and they just, they don't even notice you. Boy, I'm really on the edge of my seat right now. Difficulty. Oh, you guys were in the actual development studio where you saw Treyarch's entire zombies team come over to Sledgehammer and make the game mode? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, man. Forgive me. I'll, I'll concede to your expert opinion. Again, man, to use your own words, we don't have to take anything you say seriously either. ...mode with Blackout. Zombies was ripping out all the classics that made it fun, and the little campaign we did get resurrected fan-favorite characters for fan service. It just didn't make sense. Suddenly, the game we once loved wasn't getting the same care and love that made it special. A lot of us still had hope at this time that this was just a bad one in the series, and that we would move on with the next title. Next thing you know, unfinished titles became the norm. Yeah, World War II was fucking terrible. And all they cared about was their new baby, Warzone. Something that doesn't connect well to what we fell in love with. The only real thing that remained was the gunplay. Everything else isn't special and it's just new. At least with Blackout, we had some of the most iconic maps pushed into one giant map with their battle royale. It, at the very least, brought familiar memories to our head. But Warzone failed with that and just moved on underneath the Call of Duty name. Forgotten. But as a lot of us know, Call of Duty was adapting and following in the footsteps of others. It was replicating success found in the rest of the gaming industry. Yeah, that's what Call of Duty always did. Like, the entire premise behind Call of Duty Modern Warfare, for example, COD 4, was to kill Halo. I wish I could find this, but there was like this old Infinity War documentary I watched. I don't know why I can't find it on YouTube anymore, but... But regardless, you wouldn't find it anyway because you're on a live stream, am I right? You can't do research on live streams. Actual goddamn research, you know, because Griffin doesn't act... No shit, I'm not going to do research, you dumb fuck. I'm in a live stream. You're in a fucking video and you couldn't be bothered to do fucking research. Shut the fuck. Bro, this is what I mean. This is some clown ass shit. There was like this interview they were doing with the old Infinity Ward employees. And they were basically talking about, yeah, you know, Halo 2 lets you do all of this stuff. We want to let you do it this way. You know, whereas Halo has a lot of downtime and fights feel more prolonged. We want it to be a constant, like, dopamine rush and everything. Like, Call of Duty has always taken inspiration from other franchises in the video game industry. I mean, shit, bro. The people who made Medal of Honor literally made the original Call of Duty games. So, yeah, and they were both set in World War II. COD has never been an original concept. It's taken previously created concepts or ideas in the video game industry and has made them have mass appeal. That is the strength of Call of Duty, is they are able to make a game that appeals to the widest audience of people and the first-person shooter genre. That is the magic of Call of Duty. Nothing that they do is inherently creative, original, or unique. They just know how to make a good fucking game that appeals to a, as many people as possible. At the end of the day, businesses are pushing out these games and they want to be hyper successful racking in money. Publishers are the big bad bullies that come in telling you what to do and what must be done to get the big bucks. Their eyes aren't set on the love that goes into making a game. They look at these games as money making machines and would- Everyone fucking does. Do you think the developers that show up to work every day at fucking 8.30 in the morning are like, oh my god guys, let's work on this game out of the passion of our love for video games. It's like, nah man, I just want to get my fucking check and go home. You know, I want to spend some time with my family this weekend, maybe take out the boat, you know. Like, I just don't understand this argument. Like, game development is a fucking job. Do you think the motherfuckers working at Walmart are like, we're passionate about providing the most amazing customer service to our wonderful page? No, they don't fucking care. They're there to do their job, get paid, and go the fuck home and live their life. I just don't understand where this idea comes from that game developers are like these people that are obsessed with perfection. They love their job. They love what they create. Like, sure. Maybe they do like their job, but chances are it's not their entire fucking existence. It's probably not even their passion.
damn there's some r slash projection going on here like this is something you and people similar to you would do because you motherfuckers are just lazy ass bums in the education system with no inspiration for life whatsoever this is why i thank my past self for not listening to that propaganda bullshit from 10 plus years ago where almost everyone in my country would just be aiming to get a degree or whatsoever and neglect everything else including their own personal health they're basically just mindless zombies at this point but yeah big ups to the western side because you guys provide the best kind of choices and allow me to you know pursue whatever i want to do especially this youtube channel i'm building we'll drain them until there's nothing left. it's a job left. they've always been around the only difference now is that we cannot contain them as new methods to making this money have been discovered microtransactions flooded us locking new guns behind supply drops having us thank you black ops 2 for the microtransactions reddit chuckles r slash bootlicking literally gamble treyarch once again until we got what we wanted we pushed that into a different state where we could finally pick out what we want, but they are still sucking us dry, pushing out so many cosmetics that barely add to the game. And while the game fails in other areas, they'll make sure to hound their employees to push out cosmetics that I doubt they want to make, rather than make the game fun and fulfilling. There's nothing necessary- I don't know, I actually- <laughs> I've never- Alright, so the only Call of Duty I've ever played that I have not had fun with is World War II. That's it. Aside from that, every COD I've played has been fun on some level. Fairly wrong with wanting a cool new emote or whatever it is, but with anything, we need balance. They surrounded us with influence to buy those microtransactions. It's a salesman that keeps pitching you their crappy product until you give in and accept it. No, Black Ops 2 introduced microtransactions. It was not advanced warfare. Then when he finally drives away, he runs over your dog and leaves you to deal with it. Terrible analogy, I know, but what I'm getting at is that while these microtransactions can be avoidable, it's turning focus away and forgetting about- They weren't avoidable in Black Ops 3, you basically had to spend money if you wanted to get any of the good guns they added later on. ...about the community and what we truly loved. These creations take time, so companies need to invest that time well. While we forget about most of the downsides to those older COD games, our minds are still chasing what we had, and we have every right to talk about how times are changing for the worse. It's a battle that is worth fighting for just so that we can create some of those core memories we once experienced every night. It doesn't bother me if that sounds nerdy or being stuck in the past. We're gamers, and gaming I think has a special place in all of our hearts. We do have to appreciate the developers trying for us and putting an effort where they can. I don't blame them for being in crappy mindsets, because they have adapted to what they were forced into. Even though COD is in a dark place and has been producing average games for a bit now, there is still hope and we don't know everything happening behind the scenes. After all, Microsoft now bought out Activision and can turn things around in a few years. Not if Halo Infinite's any sort of indication. Oh yes, who could forget the two biggest fucking L's of grifter fucking gaming, Battlefield 2042 and Halo Infinite. This motherfucker literally sucked the fucking cock of these two fucking games. And then when it came out and it was shit, he started shitting on it so fucking hard. After realizing how much of a steaming pile of shit they are. But careful guys, only Griffin is allowed to do these things, or else he will call you out on live on stream or something. And I feel like the fact that I defended this game so much before launch makes it even more necessary that I come out now and call out all the bullshit surrounding the current state of this game and just the complete neglect that it's suffered from. I was one of the biggest defenders of this game prior to launch. Now now and call out all the bullshit surrounding the current state of this game. So Legacy Killer HD says this on Twitter. It's that time of year again. Oh God, bro. Legacy Killer HD, AKA Mr. Video Game Industry Bad, every single fucking day is putting out a video saying that Activision is literally going bankrupt. Let's see, hold up. This motherfucker is literally, this is like Reddit energy right here. <laughs> Like, this dude for years hyped up Cyberpunk, too, which is absolutely hilarious. Like, this dude sucked the fucking cock of Cyberpunk for literally fucking years. 
and now he puts out these videos shitting on it. Like, he is so disingenuous, man. It is a fucking joke. This dude is literally one of the biggest grifters on YouTube. Like, look at this shit. Holy crap. Inside Blizzard's Bill Cosby suite leaked. Blizzard halts work. Actually, it was 100 devs that protested. Blizzard exposed. Let's go back before that type of shit. Bethesda now sued. Bethesda sued for lying and fraud. <laughs> this is scary. EA, Blizzard, Bungie, and Warner Brothers devs demand boycott. Like, this shit is so fucking stupid. It's like, hold on. Let's go down here. Multiple lawsuits. This lawsuit's huge. Total chaos. Holy crap. The bold. Like, bro, it's all this clickbait shit. It's literally the video game industry bad channel. It's just pitiful, man. Like, it's literal clickbait. And he literally just sits there and talks about the most mundane shit. It's ironic. Maybe one day, COD will have a climb back to better. God fucking damn, bro. Call of Duty may be dead now. Shit. If they get the fucking Halo Infinite treatment. Bruh. In simpler times to enjoy with our friends. Hope remains oh shit bro the fucking Obama of gaming hope <laughs> oh I don't know yeah that was a little melodramatic that was a little over dramatic I would say like damn bro and just like that, this fanboy damage control video is over. So I guess the main takeaway from this video is that old COD bad, new COD good, and no one is allowed to criticize what the great Griffin Gaming likes. Now, I apologize for not uploading for about a month, but the false copyright strike I received on my channel for no fucking reason really did kill the mood for me to make more videos. But I've already submitted a counter notification to YouTube and we'll see what they say about it. But anyway guys, this is all the time I have for today. I'm gonna get drunk on some beer and whiskey now that I'm done with this video. Leave a like, comment, share, subscribe if you like this video, and I'll see you on the next critique video I make. Peace out.